So when we talk about the all-time great fencing matchups, right, we're always thinking about Kolobkov and Janae and what have you in the all-time great bouts, right? But right now, in the present, we are severely underrating the matchup that we see whenever we get Song Sera and Marie Florence Kandasami ma matching up from France, okay? So I want to do kind of a live analysis and breakdown here of these two styles and why they're so special when these two match up. And you're going to see an all-time classic bout here from the 2023 Budapest Grand Prix. Now, keep in mind, these two have matched up about six or seven times in the last two seasons. Every time they get together on the piste, it's usually within one or two touches margin of victory. I mean, it is lights out. Amazing fencing when it comes to Global Epe. In my opinion, these two put on a show every time better than anybody else in the international circuit right now. Sira Song clocks in at about five foot four, right? She's setting up most of her preparation with this very, very deep half step for a French gripper. She has really, really solid blade work. Marie Florence Kandasmi, on the other hand, tall, long, excellent sense of timing. She has that keen sense of punishment that the French often use when somebody overcommits in preparation. Those two styles match up extremely well together, and that's part of the reason you never get a really big margin of victory when those two compete. So let's break down this bout touch by touch. This is something I'm doing live, no script. So any feedback you have, uh, you know, always uh, open to what you have to say. So here we are. They're lining up. And they're moving right. You're going to see Song. She likes to pull in the beginning of a bout, right? She looks to pull more, play more of a counter-offensive game. But you're seeing right here in the beginning, they're kind of playing chicken in the box. Uh, Song starts to push, pull. Neither wants to go to the either side of the strip, so they're just kind of seeing who's going to go first, right? Now you see Song is kind of hanging out on the left side of the strip, and now she's starting to pull in Kadasami as she goes. We haven't seen that signature penetrating half step yet, but you see a small feint under her guard and Kandasami goes through the foot but doesn't quite hit it. Now, Song continues to bounce and is feigning around the guard trying to draw the action out from Kandasami. And Kandasami is very, very, very patient. You see, she will never ever go for any kind of errant, unnecessary opportunity. Very controlled in the footwork. She tries to do a slow start to that foot touch and goes down, doesn't quite hit it. Song is now in her two meter zone and this is where she really excels. Yes, right there you see pulls her in because she's got these freakish acrobatics in that two meter zone that she can squat into her back leg, almost conceal her entire target and just come up with these freakish touches that you just don't see from any other fencer in the circuit right now. So she starts off with a 1-0 lead. Now, once again, can ask me. Small step forward, kind of rhythmic steps. Thinks she can attack in the preparation but stops herself before she actually goes there. Song is starting to pull again. This is her, her, her area of excellence. Fainting in six, and there's that accelerated half advance. It's so good. Watch as she does this. She kind of penetrates into distance and is already out before the opponent can do something. That's how she sets up her counterattacks, how she sets up her parry repost. And on Kadasami, step forward, she goes for a flesh in preparation and ends up in a double touch there. Boom, so starting out with a 2-1 lead. And once again, I'm going to guess that Song is going to probably start to go on a pull here, right? That is her forte. It's where she excels most as she goes. And now Kandasmi again. Smaller steps, a little bit of an acceleration into her distance there. But Song backs away, maintaining really, really good distance here. Now watch. The distance is creeping closer, and you can see the tip start to kind of get closer and closer to her guard. As soon as you see the tip of a guard, that is typically the do-or-die distance. You want to either get in or get out at that point. Kandasami is pushing here. She knows that the two-meter zone is not where she wants to be. You can see her kind of back away in that moment, but now she's pressing back into that area, right? So now you see Kandasami fainting more around the guard, and she overcommits there that time. Song goes for the flesh on the punishment touch when she gets a little bit too close. So 3-1, about a minute left. Uh, we're not really having to worry about uh, unwillingness to fight here. These two are very much actively setting up their touches and kind of going for it. And again, small pushes from Kandasami. My guess is, oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. She just kind of creeps forward in the distance right there and just uses that length to her advantage. Shang doesn't realize how close she is. Just really, really subtle footwork to get into distance and go. And now we have a 3-2 lead. 
Now Song is getting a little bit more aggressive here in the box. She's kind of doing a little bit of counter pressure to make sure the Kandasami stays kind of at bay. When you're fencing somebody that's significantly taller than you, right, you got to give them every reason to get uncomfortable in the preparation, give them every reason to not want to attack you, and that's kind of what, what Song is doing here and what she does so effectively. Five foot four, French gripper doesn't matter. She really, really, really disrupts the preparation well, and that's a strong part of her game. And now Kandasami again is fainting around the guard. She's in that two meter zone. You don't want to be in the two meter zone. Let's see how she figures it out. Kandasami is going to push forward, kind of go for this uh, half step forward and then into the distance. Ends up in a double touch. Again, it's just it's a low percentage action when you're going up against Sierra Song in the two meter zone. It's a low percentage action. It's just not an area that you want to chase her into. All right, so we're going to back away here, go into our one minute break. So. What's happening here? What's happening here in the first period, right? Let's break it down. Song is going into her area of excellence, right? Lauren kind of back into her two meter zone, waiting for any kind of overcommitment from Kandasami and going for that attack in preparation when she gets close. What we're seeing from Kandasami, right, is um, maybe pressuring a little bit too close to the guard, right? Um, Song is mostly responding here with responsive actions from what we want to see probably from Kandasami, right, is drawing Song out at this point because Song's counter-offensive game is coming out on top here and she simply has the timing down on Kandasami's preparation. So let's see how they adjust here in the second period. I'm going to fast forward. Now we're at the beginning of the second period. No cards, no warnings. And you watch, like, already you could see that the frequency of Kandasami's footwork is a little bit up in this, right? Much more kind of cautious, smaller, less on the balls of her feet in the first period. And now you see her moving with a little bit more urgency. That's something she does really well. She has kind of multiple degrees that she could turn up her footwork in about. And there's the pressure right there, right? She's kind of in her face this time. Goes down for that foot touch. Doesn't quite get it. It's really hard to land that on, on Song because she's so mobile. She's kind of in and out of the distance before you can really go for her foot and she doesn't make a lot of extraneous movement that you can punish on. And Song goes for the flesh, Kandasami takes the parry, doesn't quite hit it. Nothing done. And yeah, I can see Kandasami kind of uh, being a little bit irritated here because it was Song who initiated the attack. Kandasami had pushed her back. She has the right here as the person who receives the attack to hold her ground. That's kind of why she's being a little bit um, apprehensive with the referee. So now she makes a quick feint under the guard. Look, you see her tip, how it moves, right? It's very, very subtle with the French. Moving from six to eight, it's not as drastic and pronounced as you see a lot in the Korean style of fencing where they're doing these large invitations. Hers is much more close to the guard. Small, very, very tiny movements. And we get a P yellow for Kandasami. Oh no, I'm sorry, this is from pre-rule change. So therefore, it's a double P yellow because, you know, we, we changed the rules in, in January 2023. This is from 2022. That's why they both got the double P yellow. But that's not confusing enough as is. So boom. Let's, uh, let's rewind this. Let's look and see what just happened, okay? So a reset here after, right? Song's in that two-meter zone again. Her forte. Kandasami kind of goes forward with this little stutter step. Kind of stays in close distance a little bit too long. And Song says, Merry Christmas. Goes for that flesh and preparation on that overcommitment from Kandasami. Now we're at 5-3. Obviously, anybody's game skill at this point. And as I mentioned so many times, when these two are together... Ooh, lordy. On that step forward, let's watch this again. Let's watch this again. Hold on, I'm trying to use this Windows Media Player, which is probably like, you know, the opposite of what you want to do. But let's let's watch this again. I don't have like fancy technology to use here. So she goes forward, goes for the foot, 
over commits and then look on that step forward on the top or due in attack and preparation down to the foot amazing timing song does that toe touch i think better than anybody in the women's game right now she's absolutely phenomenal at it and i think what just happened here is she requested to change weapons so they're testing their bells as you do and now we're back to the races okay so 6-3 song once again going into that two meter zone and ask me is kind of pushing for look she just changed angles on the strip that's very very subtle but anytime you're trying to play the angles game on a lefty it's it's a good thing to mess around with it and Perry Repo, she's saying that she wants a video because of possibly Cora Cordo avoid the touch. I think when I look at that and how it just transpired, I probably wouldn't give that yellow. It seemed like more of an incidental contact. I always think from what I see in international ref, and you really got to have intent in order to prove Cora Cordo avoid the touch. And I didn't really see the intent there. I saw Song start this flesh. She's kind of already going forward. Kandasmi takes that preem that she does so well against Song, and she's going forward, and it just results in a in an incidental core core, and the ref says, yeah. And American referees pay no. I think we a lot of the time we uh, obsess about uh, going for that core core to avoid the touch yellow card, but that's a good example right there of why when there isn't the intent behind it, you don't really want to give that card. So again, we're doing that penetrating half advance. She's in that two meter zone. She's trying to bait her out, trying to get her close, that she does so well. And now Kandasami is kind of going up and down. She's getting really close here. This is really close distance right here. And she's hesitating though. There's that foot touch and boom, right into the preparation. Song goes again, sets up that 7-3 lead, right? And it's kind of like, like I mentioned before, you're fencing somebody, you get your tip right over the bell guard, right around that distance, right? That's what John Normile used to tell me was what he called a distance, right? Your tip is over the bell guard at that point. You either finish the action or you get the hell out because if you hang out there too long, you're, you're going to set yourself up for attack and preparation. It's a do or die distance. And again, 7-3, song at this point, right? Counter offensive game is going to be very, very well favored, but she, let's see how Kandasami sets this up here at this point. Right, so she's pushing here. Let's watch her feet because a lot of Kandasami's success comes in her foot preparation without the blade. There's that half step right, and then she lifts her tip up. Ah, oh, that's great. So she does a little bit of a subtle, quick half step, lifts the tip up, draws Song's attack and preparation, and she counters over the top. That's what I would call an instinctual folly. She set that up beautifully. I just want you to watch Song's feet, right? Just look how quickly she goes in with the half advance, a little faint under the guard with that invitation as she goes, right? And then she's quickly out of distance before she goes. That's how she makes up for her height deficit. And for you shorter fencers out there, just watch her game. Because when you're playing with the distance as well as she does with that half advance, that is why I think, you know, when we talk about, oh, FAS have to be really, really tall. No, they, they really don't. If you have a really good footwork game and you're able to bait your opponent and play with the distance like that, you're going to be golden. Now there, Song over commits on the preparation. Classic French move. Kandasami goes for a punishment touch in response and hits direct. So now we've got just under six seconds remaining in the second period. 7-5. Obviously still anyone's game at this point. And we're on to the one minute break. Now, let's fast forward. Now we go into the third period. 7-5, we've got a double P yellow. Doesn't really terribly change the dynamics of the bout having a double P yellow at this point because these two are fencing for real, for real at this point. Oh, and what are we getting a yellow card here for? That I'm not sure. I didn't really see what happened. I don't I don't know why, why that was awarded. And we're back to it. So now the footwork is even more frequent with Kandasami, and she's kind of keeping a slightly larger distance as she approaches. But you see her tip, in typical French style, is always in front of her, whereas Sira Song will sometimes lead with the body on half advance to deceive distance. You see the French style, the tip is always in front, leaning with the tip. Over commits there in preparation, and Song capitalizes with that attack and prep. We're at 8-5 at this point. 
Two minutes and 30 seconds remaining. You see the tempo of this bout has really escalated and these two are really at it at this point. But you can see stylistically why these two match up so well together, right? It's just a beautiful game of tight roping and cat and mouse and you know, Song playing the back of the, the strip, Kandasami in her face constantly. It's just every time these two match up, it's great. Now, she kind of stays to the right there. Tip is pressuring around Song's guard. Song is running out of space there. And so she does what she has to do. She's a fox backed into the corner at that point. And Dastami just counterattacks, hits it for one light. Oh, and that's just, you know, this is a good surprise touch, right? Because up to this point, Song had kind of been waiting to get back into the two meter zone before she goes, right? And then this time she's pulling, pulling, and then on that step forward, she goes right into the preparation, right? So anytime you're fencing somebody and you're, you know, kind of always going back to the two meter zone, throw in some surprise touches like that because they're expecting you to do one thing. You mix up the tactics there, they're not going to see what's coming. And again, you can just see Song's so confident in her game. And you can see from her body language just how confidently she moves and sets these touches up. And Kandasami is kind of hesitating here, right? She's like, I don't really know when I'm supposed to go. Song is now in the back of the two meter zone. And boom. That's what uh, Kandasami had set up. I think that was the third one that she had gone for, kind of standing on the right side of the strip, pushing her back to the two meter zone, draw that flesh and go. She takes that preem, repose. And by the way, preem on the subject of preem, right? It's something that we're seeing more at the international level. Uh, righty against lefty, not so much righty against righty. It's a really inefficient parry because it opens up your entire body as you go. But when you're up against the lefty, it kind of neutralizes that angle. Kandasami pushes there, goes for a flick. Um, song counters, gets a double touch. Now it's 10-8 at this point, right? And we've got a minute and 19 remaining. And so still, anyone's bout at this point. I don't know if you guys saw in the background, but that uh, there was some uh, craziness going on there. And I guess Kuhn won a narrow one over Vivian Kong from Hong Kong. And look, Kandasmi realizes she has a ton of time. And you still see the patience, right? She's not... Pressuring too much. I mean, a minute in the world of international fencing is an eternity. And there's a little bit of a toe touch that she thinks that she can get at close distance. And look, Kandasami continues with the pressure, right? Closes, it's double, 11-9. 54 seconds, still plenty of time. My guess is you're going to see Kandasami finish this bout with a little bit more decisiveness as she gets back to the two meter zone because right now it seems like she's kind of pushing going for more defensive responsive actions but Kandasami has a very very powerful lunge and you haven't really seen Kandasami to this point yet come out with an attack it's mostly pushing waiting and defending i think you're going to see her finish a little bit more decisively now there's a little bit of oh oh and she just drops that hand and boom Kandasami gets her right over the top Beautiful touch. We got 32 seconds. Now we're within one touch of each other. So look, you see this right now. She's pushing. She's getting that pressure and she's finishing a little bit more decisively. Song again is going to try to surprise there. Go for that flesh in preparation before she can even get back to the team meter zone. And she hits it, but Kandasami is ready for that counter. They get a double touch there. And again, Song tries to surprise in the box. Maybe a little bit too early. I'd say that preparation was a little bit too gutsy given the time. And she tries to go for this feint, drop to the leg, but Kandasmi is ready. And now we've got 14 seconds remaining. All of a sudden, tie scored. You guys see why I get so fired up watching these two because it is just one of the most amazing even matches at the international level right now. And for good reason, I'm going to guess that they're going to pressure here, but no, they back away and they're going to take it to priority. So priority goes to the right for Kandasami. That's not ideal for Song because like I mentioned, Song's game and her strength is that counter offensive game. And if the onus falls on Song to pressure uh, Kandasami, the taller opponent here, it's, it's a little bit out of her favor. And ooh, I think that was probably the second repost, right? Because it looked like she got one and then the second as she went by 
But even before the referee looks at this, let's see it. Let's see it really, really quick. Watch this again. Perry. Ah, I can't really see. This is why, thank God, we have video review, especially in situations like that. This, I mean, that's a tough one, right? I'll probably get to add that one to my tough calls in Epe video series. Let's see. And she awards the touch, so. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. She's not awarded the touch. Thought the referee was giving the signal there, but no. Uh, per my original suspicion, it was a second repost, so. Can ask me saying, get away from me, you're too close. And look, look at the angle here real quick, okay? So, Kandasami is kind of, you know, you talk about French gripper angles, right? So, uh, Sira Song hanging out on the left side of the strip. You see Kandasami is kind of standing inside her guard here. That's always dangerous territory, I think. So, let's see if that angle makes a material difference or not on the outcome of this bout. Standing inside the lefty's guard when before Kandasami had been kind of finding her blade standing on the outside of her guard pretty well. And this is something that Clement Treffer talks about in his book um, about angles as well. Always kind of maintain that outside angle on a lefty when you're fencing. 25 seconds. She's pushing and boom. You always have to review video, but obviously uh, you, you always have to review video on a decisive match deciding bout. Obviously, though, this is kosher. She got her over the top. But look, this is a classic, guys. They've had so many of these bouts together. They're all usually within one touch. Over time, Kandasami's kind of been getting the upper hand on these recently. But I just wanted to showcase one of their bouts that was a real thriller. Um, because every time they get together, good things happen. Uh, I think this is one of the all-time most even matchups, great matchups between these two phenomenal fencers. And I wanted to kind of just do one video showcasing how much I enjoy their fencing and their matchups together. So... Thank you for watching. Any feedback you, ha you guys have, sound off in the comments. Uh, and thank you for tuning in.